Yum, yum! The Pushing Points Nifty Collection for Moto is a collection of user-requested scripts designed to add functionality and increase the speed of working in Moto. Let's take a quick look at some of the initial tools included in the collection. So the Viewport 180 script actually flips the viewport 180 degrees. Now it's important to note that this is actually flipping the viewport and not a camera. There's also a Map Viewport 180 Pi menu. So if I set this to a uh, hotkey, and then run the hotkey, I chose Control shift n I get this Pi menu. I can change the uh, increments of the rotation in the X, Y, or Z by 15 degrees. So that's pretty handy. The nifty edit scripts are really interesting. First we have the map pen delete. So I will click this and it'll bring up the hotkey map pop-up. So I'll choose Control shift n and I'll just overwrite my previous uh, control shift n hotkey. So now if I press Control shift n I get the pen generator and I can just start drawing out a shape with the pen generator. So I'll make this shape here. Now what's interesting is if I hover in the area that I just created within the boundary of the pen and then press Control shift n it'll actually delete uh, that area. The map pen bevel works in a similar fashion. So I'll hold Control shift n to map that to my map pen bevel, and I'll override my previous Control shift n uh, hotkey. And now when I press Control shift n and then draw out a shape with the pen tool, and then if I hover within the boundary of the pen generator tool and then press Control shift n again, you can see I'm actually getting a boundary happening here. If I turn on the uh, wireframe here, we can see what's happening. So I'll do that again from a top view. I'll just press escape a few times, control shift N to initiate the map pen bevel script. And then I'll draw out a shape like so. Here we go. And then within the boundary, I'll hold control shift N and I'll go to perspective view. And now I have my uh, offset and shift handles to bevel that uh, selection inward. The map pen vert bevel works in a similar fashion. If I hold control shift N to set that to my hotkey and overwrite my previous control shift N, I can then press control shift N to bring up the pen generator one more time. And now when I make a shape here and then I hover inside the boundary and press control shift N, it deletes the inside and then it selects the uh, vertices and it allows me to uh, bevel the verts. So that's really, really uh, useful. Next up, we have the map curve delete. So I'll just assign that to control shift N. And this works similar to the pen delete, but this time if I press control shift N, I get a curve uh, instead of the uh, standard pen. So I can close that off and edit this. And now when I press control shift N on the inside of the curve, it actually deletes the inside of the curve. We also have a map curve bevel. So if I assign that to a hotkey and then run the script and draw out a curve and then press control shift N on the inside of the selection, we have the shift and offset handles. So it just automatically allows you to create a bevel on the fly based on a curve that you draw out. Then we have the poly split plus option, which is really great. It allows you to select two verts and then click on the poly split plus. And what it does is it splits the polygon, but it also separates it. So that's pretty useful. You just select two verts, run the poly split plus, Select the polygon and you can move that away. The remove duplicate geo script is incredibly useful, especially when dealing with Bezier curves. While this works for other geometry types, um, Bezier curves can really benefit from this script. So if I select this Bezier curve, you can see I actually have six polygons. So this is six Bezier curves stacked on top of each other. Uh, this error occurs sometimes when you're modeling. You just accidentally uh, copy and paste geometry right on top of uh, existing geometry. Uh, and it's hard to tell unless you actually select the geometry. 
uh, and notice here in the bottom right hand corner it says you have duplicate geometry. So typically you would come up to the mesh cleanup button and run this uh, series of scripts. The issue is that it, with Bezier curves it doesn't always work. So if I click OK, uh, it says 80 vertices merged and it really messed up my curve and if I select this I still have six polygons so that um, did not work. So if I select the six polygons here and then run the remove duplicate geo script you can see that my uh, curve is still intact and if I select it I only have one polygon now. The quick protractor script allows us to quickly align the protractor tool to a predetermined set of vertices. So I'm going to select three vertices. The first vertex will be where the protractor tool is aligned to, and the second two vertices will be where the handles of the protractor tool uh, are aligned to. So I'll click Quick Protractor, and here I can see the protractor tool is aligned perfectly. And I can see that this angle between the pink area of polygons and the purple area of polygons is 255 degrees. So if I press escape to drop that tool, I can also uh, select this vert, and then that will be the center of the protractor tool, and then this vert and this vert will be the handles, and if I again run the quick protractor tool, I can see that this angle is 120 degrees. The edge ruler script is a simple but time-saving script. Uh, if I select some edges, a line of edges in this case, and enable the ruler tool, I can then run the edge ruler script and it will tell me the exact length of the edges that I have selected. The preset browser filter scripts are very handy for when you have a lot of assets in the preset browser, um, specifically in a folder, and you just want to filter them. Uh, the two ways of filtering are through the uh, star rating and the favorite, which is the little heart icon. So if I assign some of these as favorites, so I've chosen aluminum copper, I'll choose gold one, and mercury as my three favorites, and then I come over to Preset Browser, Filter Favorites, and run that script. Uh, you can see it just filters those, um, those swatches in this case. I have these, uh, these colors. So I can go to uh, Filter No Star, and that just sets everything back because uh, these have no star ratings at the moment. And then the other scripts are based on the star. So I'll give a few of these a one star rating, and I'll give a few of these a two star rating, and I'll give a few of these a four-star rating, and that should give you an idea of how this works. And now if I filter with one star, you can see I only see the one-star colors. And if I filter with two-star, you can see I only see the, the single two-star uh, rated color. And then if I click on four-star, you can see we have three four-star rated uh, colors in this case. And this will work for uh, all assets in the preset browser. The OpenGL FPS meter script is just a handy way to check the GL meter uh, in your viewport uh, as opposed to running the command. So if I just click on the OpenGL FPS meter script, uh, it just pops up the GL meter so we can sort of check on performance. And then if I click it again, it will go off. The select random items script is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so I have 24 items in the scene, and if I run the select random items script, uh, I'm met with this uh, prompt which asks me to select a number. Uh, now this will be how many of the existing items it should randomly select. So let's say I want 12. I'll click OK. And then here it randomly selects 12 items uh, out of the item list. The select edges all creased script when pressed will select all creased edges. Now if you hover over that button, you'll notice there are some options if you hold the Shift, Control, or Alt key while pressing the Select Edges All Creased script button, um, you'll get different options. So if I hold Alt and I type in a value of 0.3 for 30%, I'll click OK, and nothing will be selected. But if I hold Alt and click again and do 0.4 for 40%, it will select all of the creased edges that are beneath 40%. And then again, if I hold Alt and do 0.5 and click OK, it will uh, select all of the creased edges that are beneath uh, 50%. So before we tackle the map edit weight pie script, let's have a look at the set weight value script. Uh, first, I'll select a weight map in my vertex maps list, and then I'll make sure in the viewport I have show weight maps enabled. 
Uh, now I'll select some verts, and then I'll run the set weight value script. This just brings up the set vertex map value. It's the same uh, pop-up that you would get if you went to vertex map set value, but this saves you a click because it automatically sets the vertex map type to weight. So I'll set the value to 0.25 and click OK. So now we can see our uh, weight here in red, and I have show weight values enabled as well. So we can see that I have 0 to, uh, 0.25 here. Uh, so now we can map the uh, weight pie menu, so I'll click that, that brings up this popover, and I'll just map this to Control shift n and click OK. So now if I hold Control shift n and increase the value by 50, you can actually see the values changing. So that's pretty great. And if you don't want to use the pie menu, you have the same options here in the actual uh, nifty popover. So you can add 10%, 25%, 50%, 200%, or you can subtract 10, 25, or 50%. The flip vertex normals script simply flips the vertex normals of the selected verts. Uh, it's important to note that this is not actually flipping the polygon faces, it's just flipping the uh, vertex normals. The subdivision to weight script simply takes a subdivision weight and creates a standard weight map from it. So if I run the script, you can see we now have a standard weight type that's derived from the subdivision weight. The default diffuse color script will take any selected material and it will change the diffuse color to the default gray. So with this material selected, I'll click on default diffuse color and you can see the diffuse color has been set to 0.8 in the RGB values. If I hold alt while pressing default diffuse color, you can see that it changes to default diffuse color all. And what this will do is change all of the materials in the shader tree to the default gray. Now we can also select a material and choose random diffuse color. And what that will do is it'll just assign a random color to the diffuse channel. And similar to default diffuse color, if I hold alt, it will change random diffuse color to random diffuse color all. And that allows me to change all of the diffuse colors for all of the materials in my shader tree. Now we have luminous intensity zero and if you have any luminous uh, values in any of your materials, it will set that to zero. So if I come over to Material Transmissive in my Inner Parts material here, you can see I have a luminous intensity of 3.0. Now sometimes this interferes with your material reference, especially if you're uh, working on uh, meshes that are from other apps. So if I have this material selected and I choose Luminous Intensity Zero, you can see I just remove that luminous intensity from the material. It sets it to zero. Now I happen to have uh, multiple materials that have luminous intensity, so if I hold Alt, you can see luminous zero all becomes available. So if I click that, then I lose all luminous intensity across all materials. So that's a quick way to get rid of luminous intensity in uh, a scene. It'll remove all luminous intensity from every material in your shader tree. So I hope this overview of the Pushing Points Moto Nifty Kit has been useful. Adding the Nifty collection of tools to your workflow can enable you to work more efficiently in Moto. Yum yum!